All right. To begin with Simomatic, you have to start with Simomatic.com on your browser. And then you can sign up for the free trial version in which you can use the system, but for a trial period. So all you have to do is sign up for free and then you will have your login details and just log into to the website and you can put your email address and password or you can continue with Google account. So once you log in, you will see simomatic.com and then a button which says go to platform. So click on this button and then you will see a screen where you will see your account details and two ways to start your system. One is to start locally, one is to start in the cloud. And if you see the address, it says app.simomatic.com. So this is another way to start this app directly. So to run the system locally on your computer, you have to make sure your server is connected. Okay, so you will find Simomatic server. This is installed and this is running. This you can also check in your icon here. So my Simomatic server is running. So you have to make sure this is running. And then for the online for the online workspace, you don't need this server. So just click on local workspace. So let's do design the system locally. So once you do that, you will see a platform like this. In this case, you will see this is my workspace and we're going to create a system and you have some icons here. So I will explain you one by one. What are these? So let's just let's first start a system. So I'm going to create a system. I will call it my system. OK, we build a new system. And now once the system is built, you have to add assemblies in that. So I will add assembly and let's say I call it panel. And I will add another assembly. Let's call it load. So I have a panel and I have a load. So the load will be run and controlled by a panel. Now this in, in this assembly, we can add some components. So let's say we design a motor control circuit. We'll take an AC motor and we run it using a switch. Simple as that. So in this case, I have my panel. Now for my panel, I need a box, a panel box. So right click, not right click, just click here and click add component. Now here you will see a slider. Here you can go to mine or public. Mine, if you build your own components, you can see here. Otherwise, you can go to public. In public, I need a panel which will come in the category electric. So in the electric, you will see all these components. So I will type maybe panel or a box. Yeah, box. So I can take electric box small. Click on this one and click load. This is where you can rename your component. Click OK and you will see your box coming here. I can zoom in with my mouse to have a look at my box. So I can move this box up and down in different axes, X, Y and Z axis. This is done if this move is selected. You can move in X axis, Y axis and Z axis. If you select this icon, this will help you to rotate the component like this. OK. And this is in this axis. You can also change these values from here. So this is X. I can put zero, Y zero and Z zero. This is for rotation. Similarly, for movement, you can also change the values from here. OK, so let's say I place this component a little bit towards this side. OK, this looks nice. And let me see if it has some simulation. This doesn't have. So this is just a small box. If you want to have a panel in which you can open and close the door, you can also take another panel. So I will add component in the box. I will click medium and load. Here I have another option where I have a door which I can open and close. So if I go to play and I move towards this side, let me bring it on the top and click play and I click on the door, it will open the door. Okay, this will, this looks better. So we can delete the small one, which you can do from here and remove. So it's quite easy to remove and add the components. So I'll bring it a little bit here 
or maybe over here so it has a better light. So one tip here is if you move your components far away from the center, you will have a better lightning on them, like you can see on my panel. Okay, this is a small tip. Another thing is now I need to add a switch on this panel. So I can quickly go to my component library from the panel, add component, and here I can type switch. So I will have a two position switch, click load, okay. Now this will also come to zero, zero. I can move it close to my panel, bring it on the top, align it wherever I want. So let's say this position looks good. So this is my switch, that's my panel. And now if you see, once I open the panel, the switch is still there. If you are happy with that, that's okay. But if you want the switch to move along with your door, you need to add a constraint. This is very easy. Go to your panel, click on add constraint. And this is just the name constraint. Click OK. And here now I have a child and a parent. So in this case, my switch is a child and the door is a parent. So they are attached together. So as a child, I will select here two position switch, base, OK. And parent as my door, box medium and door, click OK. Now when I simulate, it will move together. This looks nice. Now in this panel, we need to add a contactor because we are going to run a motor. So this you can also go to the panel, click add component and here type contactor. So we need motor contactor. This looks OK. And click load. Click OK. Now this will also come to zero, zero. Select this one, bring it closer, zoom in. Now to move this contactor inside the box, what you can do is just go to play, open the door, then go to pause. And the door is still open. Now you can move your contactor and align it inside the panel. If you want to know more information about this contactor, you can click here, first reset the simulation, and click info. This will tell you the information about the contactor. So it says it has L1, L2, L3 as three phase input. L1, L2, L3 as three phase output and the coil, which is working on 24 volt and zero volt, so which means you need a DC power supply as well. So I need, I'll go to panel, add component in the power. I will add a power supply, load and okay. Now my power supply is here. I can also bring it inside my panel. I can move it and play, open, pause, power supply. Just make it look nice. Great. So our panel looks like it's ready, but it also need a three-phase supply. So you can go to your panel again, add component in electric. Let me see, I put socket and I have industrial socket. So this is giving me L1, L2, and L3. Looks nice. Click OK. So now I have my socket here. Check it next to your panel and bring it on the top. Now I need to rotate it. So I go to my rotate icon and rotate it like this. This will be 90 degree. And then I can move it. So that it looks a little bit, little bit realistic. Looks nice. Now let's move the switch a little bit here and on the top. Now because we made this whole panel as an assembly, let me just, as an assembly. So if I move the whole assembly, it will move all the components. So select your assembly and you can see here it moves everything all together, okay? Instead of moving the components. So it's better to make all the components in the assembly. Now we need some load. So let's quickly add a conveyor and a motor. So in this case, in the load, I will add component. In the electric, I will type motor. So I have 
AC motor three phase, which looks nice. Click OK. And again, add component. This time I will go to conveyors and I will just take the first conveyor belt, load to my workspace. So now I have two components already added and let's just bring it in a position maybe here and I can rotate it 90 degree and I can move it as well. So this motor, this can also be, this motor should be used to move the conveyor. So what I will do is I will just show it in a way like it is connected to my conveyor. So I'm going to rotate it. Pretend the motor is connected to conveyor, but we have to do it parallelly by linking it to the conveyor. This I will show you. So my motor is here, conveyor is here. To make it more realistic, let's add a box on this conveyor. So on the load, I will click add component. And here I can see my products and let's take a box mini. We have a mini box. Let's bring this box. That's gonna be, that's very small. Let's take a bigger box instead. So let's delete the mini box. Uh, component, product, box medium looks nice. Load, okay. So we have this box here. And I will position it, position it above the conveyor like this. Now you can see that the box is floating and the Simomatic offers physics engine inside by default. So if I click on play here now, it will drop the box on the conveyor, which looks nice. Okay. So a few things before I start connecting these components all together. One is every component has its own behavior. What does it mean? It means if I select a component, if I want to know how does it, it will behave in Simomatic 3D environment, I can read its script. For example, if I click on this motor and I go to view, and if you see editor, that's where all the behavior is defined. How does it look? How does it behave? What are the input output variables? For example, the symbol is defined here. So if you create your own components, you can also upload your own symbols for your component. And then it's the bodies here in which your 3D design is defined. How does it look as a visual and the behavior? In the behavior, you can see there are three inputs and three outputs, and there's a script inside. So this script will define how this motor will behave in various situations. So there are three variables, L1 current, L2 current, L3 current, and speed. These are initialized variables. And based on what you write in the script, you can define what will be the output current, L1, L2, and L3, and the speed as well. So this is the interesting way to build your own components. So let's go back now. So all the, very, all the components here might have their own input output variables. So now we have to just link the variables. So how are we going to do that? So once you see the load, here we have load and we have panels. So the idea is once I turn on the switch, the conveyor should be running. So the conveyor runs with AC motor, which means we need three phase supply. For that, we have a contactor. So first the supply will come to the contactor and when this contactor is on, the supply goes to motor. So let's bring the supply, three phase supply to contactor. In this case, I'll click on motor contactor. So L1 in will be L1 out from the socket. Okay. So here I will check my panel, my socket, L1. So my socket is giving directly load to my contactor. L2 in, panel, socket, L2. L3 in, panel, socket, L3. So now my contactor has L1, L2, and L3. So if you want to see the symbol, click on this symbol here. So my L1 is connected, L2 in is connected, L3 in is connected. Now I have to connect these outward to the motor. Very simple. Go to the motor and here L1 input. The symbol is for the input. This needs an output from the contactor. So click this one, panel, motor contactor, L1 out, panel, motor contactor L2 out and similarly for L3. And now the axis, which is the output, 
the motor has to be connected to the conveyor okay otherwise motor will be running and the conveyor will not be moving so this you can also link it here so go to conveyor belt and motor axis will be load ac motor and axis so conveyor axis is linked to motor axis now when the motor is running conveyor will be running very nice now we have connected the supply we have connected three phase input to contactor, three phase output to the motor, motor to the conveyor. We just have to build the connection for the power for the coil, which gets supply from the switch. So let's see the power supply first. This is my power supply. And if you see the symbol, it has AC input and DC output. So it, it, it needs AC supply as an input to turn on the power supply. So L1 will again comes from the panel socket L1 and neutral from the socket as well panel socket and neutral now if i just simulate you will see it has a dc power supply of 24 volt if i don't connect l1 and i run the system you will see there is no power supply this is the way how you can troubleshoot your system as well so you have to make sure all your variables are getting everything which they need so i'll go to National socket L1. Now if I run, now I have my 24 volts coming from my power supply. This should go to the switch. So I will connect, go to my switch. And if I see the symbol of my switch, I have input and output. So to my input, I will connect 24 volts. So panel, power supply, positive. And the output of switch goes to where? It goes to the contactor to actuate it because this is the coil. So I have X11 and X12. So X11 will get the supply from my switch, 14, and X12 will get directly zero volt. So power supply, negative. Now everything is connected. Let's test the system. I will go to play, hide the panels, and now maybe I zoom in it a little bit, and I actuate the switch, and you can see the switch is moving. And <laughs> look at that, the box is moving. On in front of the panel. So let's rotate the conveyor so that I move the box in other directions. So once you run the system now, you can see conveyor is moving in another direction. And because of the physics is involved, the box will fall down. All right. So this was how you can build your system link the variables with different components and simulate your system. And to troubleshoot the system, you can always see the connections here. So for example, if I show you here in the load, in the motor, and I go to play, and you can see in the motor L1, L2, L3, zero. But once I actuate my switch, you will see the voltage is coming and the current is being showed. These parameters you can also read and you can make some analysis in your components in your system. So this is how you can build your 3D systems in Simomatic. But don't forget to check my next videos where I'm showing some electrical drawings and I'm controlling the system using PLCs, using codices, and using MQTD. So see you in the next videos. Bye.